Okay. Cueing mic in three, two, one. You're good. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Stockton United. I'm Lance McCann, your host, local real estate agent with Kelly Williams. My license number is 01987449. And today's guest is Janice Todd Parsons. She is a local interior designer and professional or master stager. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Good, great, wonderful. How are you? I'm doing great. So uh, you are with ASP. And so um, what does that stand for? Right. Well, it is, um, it's a company that is, it's called Staged Homes. It's actually called Staged Homes. And um, it's a, um, it's a, it's a national, it's actually an international company. Because then you go somewhere out of state to go I, meet the, the twins. Yeah, the, the twin. Property Brothers. Oh, yeah. yeah, that was in October. We had a national, international convention. And that is um, The one with wonderful. the beard is ugly, just saying. <laughs> They're both really nice guys. <laughs> super nice that's guys. a twin joke. You always say your brother's ugly. <laughs> oh, that's right. You're a twin. I, I'm not a twin, so I didn't get that. Um, they, um, yeah, they were our keynote speakers at the convention in uh, in October. Yes. And, and it was in Charlotte, North Carolina. This year, it's actually going to be in Nashville. So that's oh, going to be really fun because right you know, I'm originally from <laughs> the South. So... Um, yeah, it, it it's a it's been kind of a long journey to get to where I'm working with them, mm -hmm. um, and I'm pretty sure you're probably gonna want to know how I got there. <laughs> I absolutely do. I mean, it's pretty amazing. A local Stockton person hanging out with the Property Brothers. That's yeah, pretty yeah, cool. that was pretty awesome. Uh, so back in the day, okay. uh, many many years ago, uh, probably more than I'd like to admit, um, I. Okay, was a Navy bit. wife, okay. a naval officer's wife, and I lived in about, I guess, 12 places in about nine years. Sheesh. And uh, so I guess you could say I moved around a lot. Uh, yeah, probably twice and in a year sometimes. Yeah, something like that. It was um, it was an interesting process. But through that process, I became very flexible about moving and and lo living in different locations. And so you never got rid of your boxes, you just put them away. Pretty much, <laughs> <laughs> you just live out of them, right? No, um, they don't call it service life Pay or nothing. Bill. So, so what happened was I was, I was, as I was a Navy wife and I would live in these different places, I, every time I moved, I would say, this kitchen does not work. <laughs> mm. I really had this passion that I wanted to become a kitchen designer. So I know that's far away from staging, but my point is, is that that's how I the got there, cause, right? Because I mean, kitchens are the focal point of they are the homes. heartbeat of the home. Yes. They certainly, they certainly are. And everybody hangs out at my kitchen. When we, when we and have... even if it's like the size of a postage stamp, yeah, right. and you have a party of twenty people, they all <laughs> yeah. end up in the kitchen. Fifteen are trying to, they're like right, starting. Right. Trying to hang Nobody out wants to eat in the dining room. Everybody wants to eat at the bar the, yeah. in the kitchen. So I realized through that process that there was a real need for someone who liked to cook to become a kitchen designer so looks for the functionality in the right kitchen. i mean you know you open a dishwasher and you can't then you can't get around to the corner to put the dishes away or something like that that happened more <laughs> times than not I, I, as an agent i see crazy things like, right like why did you like why they do that right right you open the exactly. fridge your door and you know it's just, yeah there's just no way it's just functionality just is down mm -hmm. the drain so to speak so i came across the notion at that moment in my young life that I, I'd really like to be a kitchen designer. That was my passion. And of course, when you move every, you know, few Six, eight, couple of years, yeah, it, worst case scenario, you're only in a place like two and a half to three years mm. at the most. And so in order to get really in the curriculum, you can't really do that. So at some point in time, I found myself uh, a divorced single mom and I, uh, I figured that I would get myself back to school and become a designer. I actually wanted to be a kitchen designer. So I found myself in Tennessee, So walked in and said, hey, I'd like to be a kitchen designer. And they said, oh, sorry, I can't do that. You have to be an interior designer first. You can be a kitchen designer later. Yeah. And it was a bachelor's degree. And you know, here I am in my early 30s thinking, what am I doing? You know, what, how do I possibly think that I can do this, you know? How do I uh, study? How do I study with this, as a, as a <laughs> six year old in tow? But, uh, you know, somehow or another, uh, it all happened and I was able to graduate with a bachelor's degree in interior design. 
And then I found out that it's pretty hard to become a kitchen designer. So I went about my uh, so move to Stockton. It, so what makes it difficult to be? It, I, I believe that it is. Is it the coursework or just there's not a lot of courses to take to be a kitchen designer? I think the, the internship pro, uh, process oh, of becoming okay. a kitchen designer, you have to promise that you'll work pretty much for nothing. Great. And you've got these educational loans that are down Do. yeah, on your shoulders. So... So I found that the, the best thing to do was to go into commercial design. So I went into commercial design and I did uh, that for about four years okay. right out of college. That's when I first moved to Stockton. And um, I did... Uh, How long have you been in Stockton? Well, off and on since 89. Okay. So what's that? 30 years? Wow. So, yeah. So um, I, I always say Stockton is like a black hole. It just brings you back. It does. It's a <laughs> boomerang. You go over, go someplace else, come back. So I uh, did that for about four years. So... You know, basically, my career has been multifaceted in the sense that I've done commercial, residential. I've done, I've taught, I taught at Delta College for a while oh, wow. as a as an instructor for design. Um, and but about 15 years ago, this is where the staging comes in. About 15 years ago, right before the implosion of the market in the 0203 yeah. time frame, I became interested in this thing called staging. I didn't know, really know what it was, but I had heard about it and I thought, you know, hey, it would be a really good idea to diversify. Mm -hmm. Since I had a bachelor's degree in interior design, I thought, why not try to take that information that I already had and start build on own, it. Start your own business. Build on it. Build on it. Yeah. So I looked it up and I found um, a great program over in the Bay Area. Just happened to be run by the inventor of staging, which is a really interesting story. Um, and her name is Barb Schwartz, and she uh, was my instructor. And I talk, I took the, a week long class and became a master stager with her. And um, actually, at the time, I was only the seventeenth one that had that in the <laughs> nation, which is really awesome. But that was in like o two o three, and I think it was like early o three. And from then, you know, it's been fifteen years now that I've had um, you I've had in tandem. Built yeah. yourself up to hanging out with the property brothers. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty wild. Yeah. Well, and also now I've been tapped to have the privilege of getting to teach on the national level oh, wow. for staging. So it's um. So you're not a rookie. No, I, I'm going to get good <laughs> at it any minute. Yeah. So yeah, it's um, it's really been an awesome journey of learning what not to do, what works, what doesn't work, and. And really just my personal need to really be helpful and um, and be give back, mm -hmm. it, has, it really does scratch that itch. So what is the benefit of staging? I know from a realtor standpoint, mm -hmm. but let's uh, okay. try to dive into right. your basic. Take, take, take it apart. Yeah, tear, let's tear this thing let's down. Let's take it down. Okay, so... When a person's going to uh, sell a home, whether it's a for sale by owner or whether mm -hmm. they've listed with an agent, there has to be some, let's say for example, if it is, unless it's an, a, a vacant property, I'm speaking now to occupied properties. Okay. The occupied properties, whenever a person has a home that is um, going to be listed, preferably going to be listed, not right. yet listed, that right. doesn't yet have the pictures done, then they need to consider getting the home ready for sale. Okay, so there, you can't just like throw a sign in the yard and go, oh, okay, everybody Let's come see this. this. Yeah, for the most part. Now, there's some people who do have But you have, show a, saying, you have a saying around that. Do you... uh, the way you live at home and the way you sell a home are two different things. That's right. That's right. Exactly. So even though your house may look perfect to you, it is probably not going to look perfect to the person walking the front door. Right. We so my job... Taste is to work in, in conjunction with realtors, hand in hand, as a partner, to get homes ready for sale. And so the service that I offer locally is to go in a home on behalf of the realtor uh, and offer them my best advice based on consulting 15. Fee. Mm -hmm, consulting fee. Consulting. Um, but you're a master stager. Right. right? And they so get and they get all that. All that comes with it. You know, so they get. They get the benefit of all my, not one, all my interior design experience and, and education mm -hmm. as well, and my years and years of doing that side of it, as well as 15 years of the staging experience. So they really get kind of the best of both worlds. I see. Uh, because they're not the same thing. Designing and staging are two different things. As they're kind agent. of <laughs> two as, different things. As an agent, it's hard 
to go in and tell somebody like you the way you're living in your home is not the best way to sell your home so for me it's it's ideal to have a neutral third party come in and say okay you need to this is your your punch list this is what you need to mm -hmm. do an this is what list. is uh an action list as you call it mm -hmm. and i've had people do it and it works marvelously i can't the house looks night and day different yeah the garage on the other hand is stacked full of boxes <laughs> yeah but <laughs> but people the, expect that in yeah. the garage but what what you're saying is absolutely correct what so what i do is when i talk to a realtor and i and you and i had this conversation probably about a year ago is that i am that third party buffer zone i am the safety zone i'm the neutral zone i'm the one that can go in and tell the client that their house smells a little bit like the little puppy has not been extremely good about going out uh, every minute of the day mm -hmm. and or that kitty cat. Um, but the fact is that you don't have to be the bearer of the bad news. I can be. So I have protected your important relationship with right. your client and kept that um, right. that it's, it's, it's almost like there's no dollar figure you can put on that as a value because that is a that is something that is I mean, and, and honestly, with as many years as I've been doing it and my personality, I can pretty much tell people what they need to hear and they hug my neck on the way out the door. I don't know how it works, but it just works that way. I, I know. I had a candidate. She, it, was, it, was, it was turned out that way. It was, it was good. And it helped out quite a bit. Yeah, and I, I give them also a, I give the, the realtor uh, a detailed staging report, which they can share with their owners. Um, and then, you know, you can have this honest conversation with the owners. Yeah, now this is what the stager says we need to do. We'll do, I, I recommend that we do this, you know, you, can you do this? Okay, you don't want to do that? Okay, let's hire that. In other mm -hmm. words, that it, there's, a, there's an accountability. If we can get 85% of the list done, we're good. Yeah, and if you can, and if you can get 100%, then you're like, you're over Go the away. moon. But the fact is, is that there's an accountability and, and, and uh, you, you know, they say, yes, I will do this. I will, mm -hmm. you know, box these, uh, you know, 4,000 CDs up and put them in, I had a, storage. The, the lady that, you, the, that comes to mind, she had a doll collection and it was a very elaborate doll collection, but it was all over the house. Mm -hmm. And so when they took your advice, it opened up the home, it opened up the entry. It just felt better when you walked in. And that was the biggest right. I think, selling, selling point. point. So what happens when you have a doll collection or any other kind of collection? She had also a Disney collection as well. Oh, the Disney. Um, and some other knickknacks, uh, religious relics and things that needed to go in the box. Um, but sh what happens is as a potential buyer walking in the front door, that's all they remember about yeah. the house is the Disney collection or the pretty doll collection, because maybe it reminds them of a collection they used to have when they were a little girl or whatever, but they don't remember how nice that bedroom, how much room there was. So what, what you're doing is you're selling the space. You're not selling the stuff. Right. Okay. So that's a totally different, that's a mind shift. And so in staging, we depersonalize in design, we personalize. So that's really polar opposite. You know, and then I also offer uh, staging to live too. So if you like, for example, if you had a room that you if you're a bachelor and you're watching, <laughs> and you, you don't might need some help. <laughs> <laughs> you probably do need help. <laughs> if you can't walk through your living room, you might need my help. Uh, um, but I do. There is, but it's a different mindset. And so I do believe that what I offer, as far as the, as a realtor goes, to I'm not a realtor, but what I offer to realtors mm -hmm. is invaluable when it comes to getting that home ready for sale. And your basic report, there's, you have a couple different levels. Your basic report is under 300 bucks mm -hmm. and it's super affordable. Mm -hmm. And I usually pay for it for my clients. And, a, and mo, a, most of the realtors do, and they can just, they, that's just the cost of doing business. Mm -hmm. That's what um, I was if the, if the owner, pays for it. My understanding is, and the tax code may have changed, is that they can take that off as um, a closing mm. cost expense or a an expense of selling their home, okay. uh, getting the home ready for sale. That's from last year's tax code. I'm not a tax attorney, you know, so yeah, please, uh, advise please don't. your tax. Yeah, your yeah, check your CPA's advice on that. But from what I understand, it is um, a deductible expense mm -hmm. of getting a home ready for sale. So I guess the thing about it is that if you think about it is that if you pay up front to get some advice 
prior to the listing, prior to the, the photos being made, um, then you've got the best chance of grabbing that the experience, uh, the, uh, the buyer's attention. Okay. So what happens is, you know, you don't get a second chance at a first impression. No, so, not. and, and buyers out there are very tech savvy these days. They're going to go online. They're going to look at pictures of the homes that they want to go look at. If they look at pictures of the home and it's all messy and there's stuff sitting all over the counters and they can't even see the refrigerator because there's so many magnets up there, you know, or there's so many dogs. The refrigerator is key. Um, it's surprising how my camera died. How uh, a refrigerator and kitchen cleaning off all the the stuff. The stuff yeah. opens up the home. And, and and if you but if you get a chance to do all that prior to pictures, hopefully they're professional pictures, then you've got your very best foot forward in getting that potential buyer's attention from the get go mm -hmm. instead of you know. Two months later going man this isn't working let's do something different and then having to pay the pictures again and all that and and the listing getting stale. saves you money overall it does and you know look at look at how much it costs to carry to carry the property for extra months or yeah. you know i mean this is what i like to say that it's always usually a it, always usually that's not really good it's <laughs> it's usually a bridge time for people okay mm -hmm. they're either they're either getting married and need a bigger house or they're getting divorced and need a smaller house or, or someone has passed away and they need a smaller house or they can't afford to stay there mm -hmm. or kids have gone away to college and they need to downsize because they're an empty nester. I mean, it's usually always a bridge time for people. And, and I like to think of myself as a bridge builder between where they are and where they need to get to. Right. And I think that's realtors good. feel the same way, you mm -hmm. know, we're, we're, and that's why we lock arms as realtors um, and, and stagers together. And we lock arms and say, hey, let's get this done together for our clients. Mm -hmm. And we'll build that bridge from where they are to where they need to be. I was reading this study and there was two condos and they were very close to each other. Same floor plan. Mm -hmm. One sold for 35000 more than the other one. And the only difference was staging. So it definitely adds value to a home. So clients typically, clients being home purchasers, people who are potential home buyers, cannot see how it's going to be. They can only see how it is at this moment. And mm. the, other, the other clue is that also, like if you have a single family dwelling, uh, another clue is um, that when you're, they do a drive-by, okay, they're gonna, they may go out and drive-by. Curve drive appeal by. is so important. Curve appeal is not just important. It's like if they can't see it, you can't sell it. Yeah. Okay. So if there's trees all blocking the pretty windows or the arches or anything like that, if you can't see it from the road and it isn't doesn't look nice, then they're not going to want to see it. It's mm -hmm. like that's just a tip of small little. I've seen some really dramatic changes. Just by trimming a tree. And just by tri trimming bushes back, so you can see like the windows. Um, taking you know two seasons ago. Uh, wreaths off the door, <laughs> taking Christmas tree lights down. Halloween decorations. <laughs> yeah. After the first of the year. Yeah. Those Easter bunnies should not be up on 4th of July. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I'm sure you've seen a, a lot of crazy, crazy things. I have seen some crazy stuff. Yeah. So how yeah. did you get from where you were to working with the Property Brothers? That's pretty... Okay. So... That's amazing. Yeah, about a year ago... Just, celebrity here <laughs> about a year ago or so um the the company that i had originally done my um training with mm -hmm. stage homes they uh put a you know they threw out the we need some help teaching okay. nationally and um i don't know what about you but i've always had this kind of thing about kind of if you want something like that i really wanted to go for it but i was almost afraid that to go for it because i knew i'd get it yeah. <laughs> And then I'd have to man up and do no, it. Like, I don't know. I'm like, go for no. it. Let's do it. No, it wasn't like I had. Yeah. I knew I was going to get it. I just knew in my heart I was going to get it. If I had the guts to step out in faith and go. Well, being uncomfortable is what I say. I had all the I had all the checks in the block that they were looking for. Plus, I knew they knew me personally because mm. I trained with them. So I put the threw out the gauntlet and. Um, about six weeks later or so, they got in touch with me and said, you, you know, we've chosen you. And uh, then I was like, oh, So there's gosh. no interview, they're just we chosen. I, I did a little video and sent it in, okay. and they already knew that I had all the, you know, the resume and all that, but, you know, you didn't have. But 
I, so they they offered me the position. It's a basically it's an independent position. So I I you know teach I teach about once a month or so, mm -hmm. once every six weeks. So it's a. Uh, it's not like a full time, you know, work every day type they of job. They build up the classes, you fly out to where you need to go, right. and teach class. Yeah. Right, exactly. I have one coming up in Sacramento oh, in nice. about actually it's a month a month from now. Um, it's the twenty seventh, twenty eighth of February and the first of March. So it's a three day class. Um, and I will provide the eight one eight hundred number for, for people. on the okay. you know, at the end so that they can call in. It's it's for realtors who want to be accredited. That doesn't mean they want to be stagers. That means, <clears throat> excuse me. That means that they want to. They're educated. They want to be. They want to be more knowledgeable and have an accreditation. Uh, ASP RE. It stands for Accredited Staging Partner Dash Realtor <coughs> Real Estate. And so what that means is you can stick that on your on your business card, and then anybody who knows what that means or says, hey, what is that? You can say, I am an accredited staging mm -hmm. partner. I have a I have a, an a accredited staging professional that I work with and I recommend, because as you know, realtors have a fiduciary responsibility to their Absolutely. clients to do everything they can possibly do to help them sell that house yes. for the most amount of money in the shortest period of time, okay? And that is what staging is. It's getting a home ready for sale so that it's in tip top shape for the most money in the shortest period of time, it works. It works, and so. Um, I think I was for that. So my so my class that I'm teaching in Sacramento shortly in about a month is going to be the first two days are for realtors. Okay. It's very affordable, very affordable. I mean, like probably about the same price as what I charge for my Based one like day two two ninety five something two yeah, <coughs> and it's an, an an amazing amount of information that you get for those two days. Now, if you're interested in creating your own staging business, then you stay for the third day okay. and become a full-fledged ASP, accredited staging professional, and that's a three-day class. And that, so you just take the first two days with the realtors, and the third day is all about having how to create a, a staging business, um, how to you know how to get your inventory if you're going to do vacants, uh, how to set up how to set up everything, and then we actually physically go and stage a house. Oh, really? Yeah. How cool. Yeah, so it's really going to be an awesome. Um, so I have a class in Sacramento in February, and I have one scheduled for um, Albuquerque, New Mexico in March. And then I have how more awesome later on during the year. I have one in San Diego and some in the East Bay. But So how did the Property Brothers get connected into where you're at right now? Okay, so they this company puts on a, uh, a convention where everyone that does either what I do or just as I have a staging okay. business comes to there and they um, they were there speaking uh, in uh, speaking to what staging can mean mm. to uh, to a listing because they They've obviously they out. yeah and They've they do stage out. and they totally are on board with stage homes uh, with that and and so they, they were just amazing we uh, those of us there's about there's about eight of us that teach nationally. Oh, okay, wow. it's not a, not a big group, um, and we plus of uh, uh, the other staff members. There's about thirty total. Got to spend about 30, 45 minutes with them before they went and did their speech in a room. Just All just right. asking them questions and they were pretty getting cool. yeah yeah and getting earth. pictures made and yeah very down to earth, very um, interactive. Of course, you know they're funny. And they're um, they were extremely. Uh, open to just answering any questions that we had and and just so personable you know very not at all like you would think that you know people would be that would be of that stature you yeah know? right but it was really interesting was with me and my twin brother <laughs> <laughs> they they were just awesome and um they, this one that was uh last october the next uh one coming up in this next october in this year our, our keynote speaker is going to be candace olson um, divine design oh, wow. uh, HDP. So she's going Dang. to be our she's going to be our our keynote speaker. So we're 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 privileged to get to meet all these people and get inter to be interact with them and and to learn from them, um, and and then just just a an absolute amazing amount of training that happened during that three days of. Did you feel like your head was going to hurt when you're done? Uh, I tell you, it was it was pretty it was pretty overwhelming. That considering the fact that you don't get much sleep when you're at oh, those yeah. things. <laughs> so. so you've been doing this for so long. Did you actually learn a lot from this, or was it more like a refresher course? 
Um, you know, they've lots have changed in 15 years. Mm -hmm. Many, many things technologically, uh, it's very much more advanced. Um, so yes, I did learn quite a bit going back through. I've done my training now. I'm going to go to Long Beach week after next to um, uh, shadow one of their uh, trainers that's been training for oh, many, nice. many years. Um, I've already trained. I've already shadowed one that's do a also do an online class that um, that I've shadowed. But it's yeah, I'm a lifelong learner, so I'm every time yeah. I take anything, I learn something new. You, yeah, you right? You have it's, to be. Yeah. Exactly, but it's it's exciting to me that I've, I've kind of come full circle now where, um, you know, I, I've, I've done the, the design and I, and, I, and I did the staging and now I've had a couple of different staging businesses throughout my life and now I'm, I'm kind of come back to where I can give back nice. and, to, and use all the experience that I have had over the years and, and bring that to the table. And then also, you know, the, you know, in real estate, they always say location, location, location. Well, the same thing with staging. Locale is is important, mm -hmm. and I've lived so many different places, you know, <laughs> so many so different gotta, places gotta, that gotta, I can really from... that I can really relate. Like if someone says, "Oh, well, I'm but mine, I'm come here to Albuquerque, but my I live in Texas, or I live in you know, I live in Georgia," I'd be like. Okay, I live there, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> lived everywhere. Yeah, so what is lived the, a lot of places. How does your industry see staging? What is the increase in value? For if I spend X amount of dollars, how much more value do I get over here in the sale? That yeah, and see, that is that's one of those situations where oh, definitely it, it's exponentially, you know, more than you put into it, but it. You know, we as real non-realtors, mm -hmm. we have nothing to do with with the price that they set. For right. the, it's the set price that you know the the listing price mm -hmm. is. I mean, like if they've already priced it too high, then maybe said you help, maybe it won't. I mean, it's so you know, well, right. it's kind of out of our hands. Um, but that's where working with a an ASP our realtor a partner realtor would really be handy because they already kind of know the whole scenario. Mm -hmm. And they've already advised their client. I don't think that we should list it this because it's going to be, you know, way more than the others in the neighborhood, right. and then it's just going to get stale. Uh, but it most definitely helps. Staging helps. If nothing else, it's a mind shift for the homeowner to yeah. understand that that this is like a legitimate thing we need to happening. do. This is happening. And then, of course, I've run into situations where there have been people who really didn't want to move. I mean, so you, you can almost like, it's almost like a psychological experiment because you can test out and see how serious they are about wanting to move. Let's say, for Sometimes example. Sometimes one person wants to move more than the other. Exactly. <laughs> and exactly. That's it's you, a hostile situation yeah. sometimes. And then, you know, do it, doing a divorce or probate. Oh, you yeah. know, Those are always yeah. the emotional times that are very difficult. <clears throat> Because especially in a divorce, sometimes people are holding on to something just to have that connection with the other person, but really they're just they're fighting. Yeah, it's, it's terrible. Yeah, and it's, then probate when there's a death, like hey, you need to get rid of all this. Up, that, yeah. that was Grammy's favorite salt shaker. You know, yeah. it's just it's yeah, crazy. No. <laughs> some, of the, some of the things people that they fight over is crazy. To. Well, what I've noticed to be true is that. For example, I'll go into a, a house um, and I will tell on my report, I will tell the owners, this Pepto-Bismol pink little girl's room has got to be painted. Mm. And they'll go, but my daughter loves that color. And I'll say, but do you want to keep the house or do you want to sell the house? Mm. <laughs> right. Okay, that's a hard question. And they'll go, well, we want to sell it. I said, then we need to paint it. Mm. Because are you, are you going to be moving? It doesn't matter. Yeah. If you're going to be keeping it, leave it. If you're going to be selling it, then listen yes. to me. Okay, because nine times out of ten, somebody walking in, maybe they've got a boy that's going yeah, to be yeah. in that room. Or maybe they can't stand pep maybe they, pink. Maybe yeah, they have all boys. Maybe so. they have all boys. Maybe they don't have any children at all. Maybe they lost a child. I mean, you don't know what people walking in the front door right. have, what baggage they're bringing with them. Okay, so in order to really neutralize things in a way that it will appeal to the most people walking in the front door, what, what I want as a, as a stager... What I want to achieve is the ability to have a potential homeowner 
step in that front door and look at and look at the place as they step in. It's not if it's some bright it's color cool. that they don't care for. What colors do you find are the most attractive to the most people? Well, we've been we've been going through kind of a grayish, you know, beige, sort face. of a face, kind yeah, like a black and white face. Exactly, and I but I think that you can never go wrong with the really soft neutrals. I say warm neutrals. Don't go with a cold gray. If you go with a cold gray, not chilly. Gray. Physically, physically, but, but emotionally. Emotional. Yeah, and so uh, any, and I'm just saying, just a base. You know, you can do pops of color here and there, but for the most part, you really need to be considerate of what, of what people. It's it it's a lot of people off. Really, it makes them not feeling well. Um, uh, it there's just a psychology of to color. It's it's interesting. Wow. But the most, but the most important thing is that how can we grasp the attention of that homeowner? And then if they're going to look, let's say they're going to look at eight houses in one day. My, when my daughter bought her house, she looked at eight houses that day. It's hard well, to remember all the houses. Well, she didn't really look at eight houses. She looked at the list, and then she they, they drove up and said, she said, no, oh, I don't like the way this is too crowded. To keep driving, yeah. you know. So you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. you have to physically want to go in. Right. Which is like it looked at the curve looked at the MLS the picture. Yeah, looked at the <coughs> MLS pictures online. They, but we can do something about the yard. Um, but she looked at eight houses that day, so to speak, and I'd say she was considering about four of them, and the thing that she felt like she could live in. Right. You know, it, it spoke to her. So you know, that's okay. what you know. That's where it goes. It really, it really is a matter of trying to get to the point where, where you can. Uh, entice someone into thinking that they could live there. I read it, well, I have a video and I read a quote, it's uh, love at first sight or something along those lines isn't that always true love, but it's, it's definitely <laughs> an invitation to consider the matter. So yeah, when you walk it's an in, open door. <laughs> yeah, you walk in you have a, a blank canvas versus having some furniture and some pops of color mm -hmm. helps the person imagine it just feels better when you walk in versus it's, right. even if the house is warm physically it while you walk in it it feels cold and the thing another thing too is that the uh, people who have been doing model homes for many years have always used a psychology oh. of less furniture more walking around space so let's say for example a family room needs a full-size sofa so daddy and whoever wants to can lay down and watch tv mm -hmm. they'll put a love seat in there you know why? Because then that makes the room feel larger. Yeah, absolutely. But there's gonna never gonna be just a love seat in that. There's always gonna be a sofa. Yeah. So staging likewise. See, we would like to we'd like to try to show as much of the floor space as possible because mm. then it gives the other person and I the person coming in looking at it an idea of how they could use the room. And then also I mean I'm not if, if they have a big, huge, you know, ten person sectional yeah. And it's a or ten by ten room. Ten person dining room table. It's not. It, yeah, it's not gonna. It's not gonna fit. But, but you're trying to get them to visualize what could fit in there, mm -hmm. because people do not like. Uh, most people cannot visualize in. Visualization is 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 not just a learned skill. It's a, you know, it's something that it's an aid. But the the other side of the coin is you're trying to get them to visualize. But if it's so full of clutter, mm. they can't see the they potential can't. they'll only remember the clutter yeah yeah exactly um they so when you so when you're looking at a, a room and it's completely empty there there's a a, a disconnect they're like oh it's an empty room i wonder mm. if my furniture would fit in here but if you have put in a love seat, uh, <laughs> a love seat maybe a, maybe two chairs a small sofa an area rug and a table they can go oh okay um my I think myself is about that size, but it might be a little bit bigger. But there's, but there's lots of room here. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, the, the amazing thing is that they later, oh, look how much room there is here. You know, so it's like that's what that's the impression that you want to give people. Right. It's like, what do I have to work with here? Right. And, and literally, you cannot, you cannot, um, you can't show them, you know, like a collection. Like we were talking collections. This is what I was going to say a minute ago. Okay. Was collections are problematic two ways one they could get stolen i mean True. let's face it it's it happens yeah. or two they are broken mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah most slowly, likely bragging. slash broken and or that's all the person remembers mm -hmm. so we want them to remember the house not the collection. not the stuff yeah 
Unless, now, unless you're going to sell all the stuff with it, and if you're going to sell all the stuff, that's a whole other deal. But for the most part, people don't usually do that. They'll usually, maybe they'll say, oh, I'd like to buy that washer dryer or something that's you're different. Right. And then as far as the garage goes, you made point about the garage mm -hmm. earlier. I tell my clients that the garage should not be stacked to the ceiling with boxes. If, I mean, rent an off-site storage right. if you have to. But people are not going to expect the garage to be eat In, off the floor perfect. Right. Okay? And, that's what I tell and you. some of them are. I've seen some that really <laughs> look like you could. But for the most part, people are pretty forgiving about garages. Right. Now, if those same boxes are stacked up in your spare bedroom, it's not, not so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, that's not going to work. Um, so, and the other thing, another, another clue is if it's a walk in closet, please let me walk into it. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it, right. you, I you know what I mean? It doesn't have to be perfect. It, has, it can have clothes in it. It can have boxes, even um, shoe boxes, but let there be some way to walk in a walk-in closet mm -hmm. because it is a walk-in closet and people right. want to come in and see if their things would fit in it. And they will look in every every cabinet. They will look in every cabinet. Yeah. <laughs> so how do people find you? How do people get a hold of you if for two reasons? One, if they want to use your expertise. Uh -huh. And two, if they want to go to the class. How okay. They you? So I will um, provide the um, the 800 number that they could okay. go on to for, and the website for the class. Okay. That's um, great. Okay. So let me put my classes on. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I had to go get some the other day. I was like, man, I can't <laughs> read it. Okay. So you want to go to the website is www. Got to have that. Dot. Stage Tomes, S T A G E D H O M E S dot com. And if you go to that website, you will find um, lots of information. And you're, you'll click, you can click on uh, future classes. You can learn about all kinds of things that you probably don't even know to ask about at this point. But um, especially if you're a realtor and you're interested in taking a two day class up in Sacramento, that's still open. Right now, um, I would love to have you as a student in my class. I think that I think that as I'm not an expert on this, but I think as the market shifts goes and the bit. shifts a little bit, that that there's going to be more competition and that staging you staging will be more important. staging is going to be more important and and realtors that have this accreditation will rise to the top. Mm -hmm. If you really want to, um, you know, be get those key listings then that accreditation will perhaps help okay. you out. And it's a couple hundred, 300 bucks or whatever it is, two days well spent. It's a, it, it's not a CEU in California, but that doesn't mean that it's not valuable. It just means that it's tough to get CEUs mm -hmm. past yeah. sometimes. Right. But um, the, um, let me give you the 800 number. You can call and speak to Krista. She will be more than happy to help you in any way she can with these classes. It's 800. 392-7161, and uh, Krista will probably answer. She is an amazing uh, staff member there, but you can also reach me at my local number if you'd like at 209-420-0086, and that is a number that you can either call or text. All right, and then they can also find you on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Under uh, my name, uh, Janice Todd Parsons. I got you tagged in there. So right, right. If you need some uh, interior design, staging, or you're a real estate agent in the local area and need help or uh, just have questions, reach out to Janice. She's very friendly and she makes one <laughs> heck of a mean peach cobbler. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the Georgia girl in me. And so <laughs> thank you, everybody. I look forward to seeing you next week. I'm going to have uh, Benjamin Staple or Staple. He's a local Stocktonian. Can't you come?